Hey Brewers, welcome to another F***ed Up Friday. I've missed you, hope you miss me. Somebody asked, I keep saying ask and you shall receive. Somebody asked, light AVB Canadian or American lager. Well, I mean I use, I've been doing a lot of Skulls Light so I'll spare you another Skulls Light video. We're gonna do our Canadian ale kit. We call it Canadian ale, but as we know ale and lager, mostly just what yeast we're gonna use. So, we're gonna do the full brew day video here for you. We're also gonna do a little bit of an experiment here today. We're gonna split it off into two of these ox bar kegs. We love these things, really like them, find them quite useful, and we're gonna pressure ferment in them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna split one off, we're gonna do, it usually comes with either USO5 or W3470 if you want that hybrid lager option. But today, because I've used 3470 to death, we're gonna use USO5 for our ale one. We're gonna use Mangrove Jack's Bavarian Lager M76 for our other one. And again, we're gonna do that pressure ferment at room temperature, even though this one is one of those ones that wants that low lager temp. I'm gonna keep doing these ones until I find one that doesn't work because so far I haven't. So you're gonna get both. Obviously, you don't have to split it up. You can put it in one fermenter. If you're gonna do room temperature though, probably wanna stick with that 3470 if you're doing the lager version, okay? So, what do we got here? This is a very simple recipe like most of the most of your light lagers, right? Or regular lagers, it's gonna be a five percenter. If you want it to be a four percenter, just leave the dextrose out. We also have an ex, what's with the dextrose, Brad, okay? Well, the reason for the dextrose, we also have a partial mash version of this one and it has no steeping grain, so we use the dextrose instead of flaked corn and I'm just gonna keep that going, why not? We had this uh, 10 minutes left in the boil with our clarifying agents and such. We got Willamette at 60, Willamette at five. We're gonna use some Whirlflock. Of course, we're gonna use our Y yeast, W yeast, however you wanna pronounce that, beer nutrient blend. And then, as always, we're gonna use the full plethora of um, minerals. Uh, we're search, shooting for a mash pH of 5.24. We're gonna use five mils of lactic. Don't use this verbatim unless you're from Winnipeg because it will not match. Uh, we're gonna use six grams of chloride, one Epsom, one gypsum, and that should give us a chloride sulfate ratio of 1.5, thereby enhancing our maltiness. Doesn't that sound fancy? All right, well, I'm already up to mash temp. We're gonna mash at 148, but I've got it at 150 because our grain's gonna bring that down a couple of degrees. So let's weigh these suckers out and let's get it on. Right, six grams of chloride. Come on, gypsy. Gypsum. Okay, one gram of gypsum. Oh, and I just remembered, I forgot to put my Camden tablet in before we all start to get rid of that chlorine, chloramine. So I'm gonna do that before, but for now I'll just finish weighing this up. Well, okay, well, we're going two grams Epsom. <laughs> Not really gonna mess with our beer very much at all. Maybe even better. Usually I keep it pretty minimal. Where's my Camden tablets? Crap, we'll have to go out in the front. Oh, look who it is. What's up, Michael? Camden, so we only need one of these for 10 gallons, so we're gonna put half in our mash and half in our sparge. Let's go. Now you don't need two Brewzillas, although I'd love to sell you two. You don't even need to heat your sparge water if you don't want. It's just gonna make your brew day a little bit longer. But uh, I'm here and we got other things to do, so we're gonna heat that sparge water. All right, give that a little stir. And put some in here as well. I haven't really noticed much of an effect like when I forget to do this. Um, so maybe one day we'll do uh, side by side. Camden, no ta Camden, see if we get uh, any real effects there. All right. So we got our minerals. Have you got the minerals? All right, and our, what are we doing? Five mils of lactic. I still haven't remembered to buy a bigger thing to measure the frickin' lactic than this, so we're gonna have to do this five times. Busy day here at the shop. All right, let's give that a little rinse. 
All right. Dip my fingers in super hot water. Hot, 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 hot. And give that a little stir. Get that all circulated in there. And now it's time to mash in, boys and ghouls. Right. And as I always say, I like to mash pretty wet. I'd rather it look like soup than granola. And we're gonna save our plastic bag for our spent grains. Always like that method. And we're gonna turn down to 148 on our Bruzilla Gen 4. When you mash wet like this, it's pretty easy to not get any dough balls because I mean, I can literally feel them hitting the hitting my mash paddle. I also like, big fan of the stainless mash paddle or even a wood one. Plastic ones, it's finally got a lot of give. You can't really feel those dough balls in there. Right, boom. We got Paul's handy dandy Brazilla hack here. Really like this invention of his. Now, because we don't have the overflow pipe here in the Brazilla Gen 4, we're going to, we're gonna, first of all, we're gonna fire it up. And off she goes. And we're gonna slow the flow. So we don't end up getting an overflow here or foaming up. Okay, and we've got our, oh, you know what? I set that at 170, I'm gonna go down to 165 for our sparge water. It should cool off by the time we need it. All right. I will see you in an hour. I'm gonna go sample some beer. Cheers, hit that like and subscribe. Don't wanna miss us. If you miss us, you fucked up. All right, my phone just ding a -ling my butt, so it's time for sparge. Uh, one thing I never mentioned is you can do what's called a mash out and you can actually start bringing up your temp for the last 10, 15 minutes of your mash as long as you don't go over 175. So I'm gonna start it up right now. We ain't got all day here. Bam. All right, now kill the pump. Open that back up so I don't forget later. All right, we are done with that for now. Lift it up, because we're on the Gen 4, we got two sets of feet. We're gonna lift it up to the first set of feet. And we are going to sparge with 2.5 gallons. We got our sparge water up to about 164. Somebody has used my only, oh, well, you know what we'll do instead? We'll just transfer it out with like this. So I'm at six gallons in here, so we're gonna go down to three and a half. I mean, because we mashed so wet, we don't have to worry about any dough balls or anything. We're just gonna give it a good rinse down. Might even fill it back up a little bit. Right, two gallons down. And there we go, two and a half gallon sparge. We're done with this guy. And now we'll lift it up to our other set of feet. Oh, spraying out the sides. We don't want that. There we go. Oh, all right. It's spraying out the sides anywhere else. Beautiful. All right, so that's gonna bring up. We'll get to a boil. We'll add our Willamette. I don't think you need to watch this drain out, so go have yourself a sippy poo. I'm gonna have a sippy poo, and we'll see you in a bit. All right, so we hit boil. Time to put in our 60 minute Willamette. And because we got that beauty false bottom, we're just gonna go plunk. Oh yeah, I forgot to do the smell. Willamette, you know. Not really known as a, one of the smelling ones, but uh, me Reiki. All right, so we will see you in 45 minutes to put our dextrose in and hook up our chiller. Hit that like and subscribe. Have a sippy poo for me. We'll see you in a bit. All right, 
So we got 10 minutes left. We're gonna stir in our dextrose because we do that 10 minutes left in the boil and then we're gonna start our recirculation to sanitize our chiller. As you can see, I've already got the chiller hooked up. And there we go. That's gonna get us up to our about 1048. So we'll hit our 5%. So we're actually gonna be just a little bit over 5% with the lager because we'll get a little bit more attenuation than with the ale. Boom. And I'm gonna put a glove on for this. No glove, no love, they say. Uh, I'm just gonna let that go into there. And of course, that's There we go. Okay. First, we will start this one. Okay, and now it's in there. Let's push our little bit of water out from the last brew. No. All right, that's getting, that's getting hot. All right, all right. And we will just go with the slow and then we'll fire up the Sabco pump when we're actually ready to chill. And may as, you know what, we're getting close. May as well put in our whirl flock and our yeast nutrient right now. You know, half a pill for five gallons, boop. And some more yeast nutrient. All right, we'll let that go for another, what do we got? Six and a half minutes. Then we'll fire up the chiller and then we're gonna go into our two ox bar kegs and put our spunding valves on and then we are good to go. Very exciting. Never done ale versus lager on the same wort, so it's kind of fun. Seen a few. All right, actually, I almost forgot. We got a five minute Will Met edition. So we're gonna put that in there too. I'm gonna start using this more. Boop. And there we have it. Five minutes till chill time. I'm gonna star sand up my fermenters. Make sure to get in there, boy. All right, pump time. Fire that up and fire this up. Look at that blubber fly. All right, a little sippy poo of a cream school while we wait for that. Luckily, because we're doing the room temperature lager under pressure, we don't need to wait for this to get down too far. So luckily for that, that last few degrees, trying to get down to lager temps, such pain in the butt. Like we are, we're already down to 35. We only need to get down to about 20. Man, other than cleaning the plate chiller, I love me a plate chiller. Can't wait to try out this big boy I have back here. One of these days I'm gonna get around to setting it up. Look at that sucker. Oh yeah, we gonna fire that one up one of these days. Meantime, you know any jokes? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> 25, come on, come on. Big money, big money, big money. I don't know if it's just the water's extra cold because it's really cold here in February or this is, seems to be just really fast today. Not that I'm complaining. Now I think to fill these guys, I think I might turn off the Sabco pump and just run the Brazilla pump so it's a little bit slow to fill them. I'm not sure. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. No, I'll let it rip. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. 23, we're slowly but surely. Who the fuck is Shirley anyway? Seems to help it out a little bit. So what's with the third ox bar keg? Well, I got a little experiment that we're gonna do with, because uh, obviously we're only gonna put 13 liters. Well, you can fit 16, but we're gonna put 14, 13 or 14 in these guys, and then I'm gonna save some other wort for another experiment. All right, so let's pinch that off. And here we go. Oh. Up Fridays. <coughs> this is where having a friend to brew with comes in handy. All right, so we're now down to 19. Of course, we already, we off camera, star sand these things and these ox bar kegs. 
I also pre-calibrated my spunding valves, which uh, if you've checked out some other videos, it's kind of a nice thing to do, so you don't have to worry about this kind of stuff. All right, pinch that one off, and into the next one. The old knees just can't squat down for that long. Seriously. Oh. Hello. Hey y'all. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. All right, so now I'm gonna shut this one off. And same amount of work in there. Actually wanna get a little bit more. These guys. So get them about the same. Right, kill that. Actually, we'll just let that recirc a little bit more. While we wait, okay, slow this down. While I do my thing here, all right. Okay, pitch our yeast. So we're going with Bavarian lager for one, USO5 for the other. What I like to do for these type of experiments, I'm gonna actually tape the pack of yeast to the side of the fermenter. Of course, I don't have any tape right now. Well, you know what? <laughs> Check this out. We don't even need to tape it. Kegland, you sly fox. I'm gonna stick that in there like that. Oh, I missed these. I don't know what. Oh, God. Ah! Oh, yeah. Luckily, the fermenters were closed for that, and I didn't sneeze into the kettle for the next thing. Okay, that definitely wasn't as easy as taping it on there, but I don't have any tape, so. All right, now, attach these guys. I think I actually have my colors opposing, but that's the one that doesn't have the dip tube hooked up to it, so. And then we're gonna do room temp on this, so just gonna put these over here and check on them tomorrow. We'll see you in a couple weeks for the comparison. I know that's probably not the French word, but I don't care. Sounds fun. Don't get too fucked up. I'm already getting there. Cheers. Two weeks later. All right, we're back. We got our Canadian ale versus Canadian lager, same wort, different yeast. Okay, so we got our Mangrove Jacks M76, that's Bavarian lager, and then we have our good old US05. So, Beautiful clarity on both. Nice carbonation, good head. Well, I mean, this one smells a touch more German, whatever that means to you. Um, but I mean, they're both super clean. I mean, it's a 5% it's a beer lager so i guess this one will be a little bit higher bit, bit higher attenuation on this one so we'll have uh, like maybe 5.2 5.3 percent whereas we're pretty much five on the nose here that is nice oh other fun thing about this is we fermented and served from the same vessel we had our ox bar kegs here with our floating pickup tubes so i literally just Popped them in, and you can see our sediment at the bottom, but still clear beer. I mean, yeah, I was pretty careful moving them around. If you start taking that on a car ride, it's gonna stir up for sure. But uh, okay, let's check our USO5 now. It's a little bit, a little bit, you know, thicker on the mouthfeel, but both very clean. See that little German note? Versus just, I mean, it's mainly a mouthfeel difference, honestly. Um, the USO5, I'm kind of tasting the dextrose that's in the, um, in the Canadian ale a little more. But, uh, I mean, we are kind of comparing apples to oranges here, but like, what really surprises me is how truly similar they are. But for yellow fizzy water, 
I'm gonna go with the lager yeast every time, personally. We fermented them both at room temperature, under pressure, I believe it was 15 PSI. I think obviously the lager yeast appreci appreciated that, I'd say a little bit more than the ale yeast. Another success, personally, I like that Canadian ale and I'm really loving these experiments with fermenting lagers that want you to ferment cold at room temperature under pressure because this is, there is no off flavors here, baby. And it's just whatever we are at the shop, probably 18C. She's a beaut. I think I'm gonna have to try something a little more extreme. We're not fucking up enough here. Well, again, I'm double fisting. Hit that like and subscribe and do the same. We'll see you next week.